Welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. My name is Lukash, and today we're going to be talking about truth tables. So you have to write a function in homework 4 to generate a truth table from an expression. Um, and part of what you have to do for that is to generate the keys of the truth table. So if we look down here, here's a truth table. I would argue that the very first step or maybe not the very first step, but a key step is uh, is generating these. And these are output by all combs, or all comms. Um, they're in order binary numbers, uh, and the, the number of them depends on how many variables you have in your truth table, right? So if they tell us to make a truth table from expression 5, for example, here's expression 5 down here, I would see, okay, well, there's x, there's y, and there's z. That's three variables. I want to make a truth table that has every single combination of zeros and ones with three variables. And of course, that's going to be two to the third power or eight of those. Okay? Um, this might, this function all comms might vaguely remind you of power set. Um, because basically your goal is to generate every single uh, arrangement of these zeros and ones. And I'll show you the method can also mirror uh, what we did for power set. So here, all, com all comms for zero returns an empty list of an empty list. Right? There's no values of any variables when there are zero variables. This will be our, our sort of base case. When we want to do all comms of 1, we can think of this as duplicating that original. So we have, we have our outside list that just holds everything in, right? But inside of that, we've duplicated our original empty list. We've added a 0 into one half, and we've added a 1 into the other half, right? That's the same as this. Let's see if that procedure works again. So I'm going to have my big outer list. I'm going to copy in my contents from the previous call, or from the, from the, the function call on all comms minus 1, essentially. Copy it in here, and I'll have another copy in here. Let's see if that, that, that same idea works. So into this half, I'll put an extra 0. I'll put it at the beginning. And in this half, I'll put a 1 at the beginning. Does that get us what we want? I think it does, right? And you can go through it if you want, but you'll see that this here is the same thing as if we duplicate this, put a 0 into one half, and a 1 into the other half over here. So that should help you come up with a sort of recursive procedure where you can use you know, when I call all comms on 3, it'll recursively say, well, hey, do this to all comms on 2, which will call it on 1, which will call it on 0, which will return this empty list of an empty list. Okay, so once we've done that, we have this part of the truth table. Just these kind of keys of the entries that form the, so back at the definition, the rows of our truth table, right? So getting the vars should be pretty easy. Let's do that. Let's think about that really quickly. We have a function called all variables that takes an expression and outputs a list of all of the variables, right? So if we run all vars on our expression that they give us in truth table, that should give us this list. That's pretty easy. Remember that your goal here is to make a truth table. And the way we make a struct in Racket is putting the struct name uh, after an opening paren, right? So tt blank blank will make a truth table, makes a truth table. So here, we're going to put our all vars, all of the variables. Here, we're going to have to put something a little bit more chunky. So we know that we want to make 
these keys with all comms. Remember, all comms takes a number, n. That n is going to be the number of variables we have. Is there some way to get the number of variables from the list of all the variables? If you look back at our list functions video, I'm sure you will find a function that will tell you how many elements there are in this list. And then you can run all comms on that. So once you have those, once you have all those comms, now you have to make them into entries, right? It would be super easy if we just, well, hey, take all of those comms, which are already in a list. Remember, so our, our rows is just a list of entries. And right now we have a list of comms, right? So what if we map to procedure? We'll write a helper function. Write a helper function. I'm just going to call it uh, make entry. That takes in takes in a com my expression because remember it needs the expression if it's going to evaluate it and get this output number and outputs an entry. Okay, takes a com and expression and outputs an entry. So what do we need to do to evaluate a com? Oh, it should also take, we'll see why soon, but it should take all the variables. I mean, you can get that from the expression, but it's easier to pass it in probably. So to do that, we need to run eval in environment, right? That's how we get the value of, uh, of an expression in an environment. So what's our environment? Let's remember really quickly what the definition of an environment is. It's up in this document. Environment is a list of entries where the values of variables, in this case symbols, are specified. So how are we going to specify those values when all we have is a com? Right? A com is something like so let's let's write out everything that we have. In make environment, we have a com something like 0, 1, 0. An expression, something like bnd x bior yz. At least should have single quotes before them. Run really quickly. And we have the list of variables, x, y, z. OK. So these obviously specify the values of these, right? In this case, we want to evaluate you know, the output for this line, the line that corresponds to 0, 1, 0. Here, I guess it's uh, here. But in our truth table, we want the output to be based on when x is 0, x is 0, y is 1, and z is 0. So we have to make that environment from this com and this list of variables. So maybe I suggest you have another helper, another helper that takes a com and a list of variables and makes an environment. Right? That should be pretty easy to do. Just match up the values in the com and the variables, right? That can be done recursively. We can just say, well, when one of these is empty, we're done, and else make an entry out of uh, this variable as the key, and this is the value. Okay, so let's review really quickly. We've gotten the variables from all of ours. We've gotten these comms, and then we've mapped a function onto them that turns them into entries. That function has to evaluate them. So it says, you know, map this function that makes an entry out of the com and something like evaluate an environment of this environment we're making and this expression that we've passed into make entry. Okay. I hope you're following me. I hope you're still following me. After we do that, we should have our whole truth table. It's a little bit chunky of a problem. Sometimes it's easy to get stuck in it if you don't have the right method, so I just wanted to provide some advice. 
on how to approach it. This is, I think, perhaps the, the simplest way with these helper functions. If you have any questions or trouble, please come into office hours, email the CS201 help email or post on Piazza. Thank you for watching this truth table walkthrough video, and I hope to see you in the next one.